name is Jim Nichols. I'm a farmer from Lake Benton, Minnesota, and I was fortunate to have served 20 years in public office, state senator, state commissioner of agriculture, so I've been involved politically and as a wind turbine owner and as a farmer, and I have also managed wind farms. How long have you farmed your land for? My entire life, 36 years. I've been a farmer all my life. Well, right now I grow corn, which is made into ethanol and distiller's grain, and wind, a big wind turbine on our farm. So I grow two crops, so fuel for your car and electricity for your home. <laughs> wind is my best crop, far away my best crop. It's my most profitable crop, and the reason is my wind turbine, I call it my combine in the sky, is out there harvesting the wind 365 days out of the year. My other combine, when I get done harvesting the corn, the combine goes in the shed and it sits there for 11 months. But my wind turbine's always out there harvesting. It was almost five years ago now and it has run just perfectly, almost nonstop for almost five years. How did you decide to do this? Well, I was lucky the, the local wind company, Vestas, which is the largest wind turbine maker in the world, was looking for a manager for their, they had built wind turbines around me, and so they recruited me to be their manager, and I had a great crew. So for many years, I climbed turbines with my crew and fixed turbines and kept them running. And once you've been up in a turbine, you realize how much they can produce, and I wanted to own one. So I just uh, went to my bank, and, and I own it with my brother, our families, we own it together and we borrowed the money and built a wind turbine. At full production, it lights up 500 homes. On average, we light up uh, 200 homes. We're at about a 40, little over 40% capacity factor. Um, we produce over 5 million kilowatt hours per year, usually about 5.4 million kilowatt hours every year. Very consistent production. We have some great wind resources. I know, I know you have good wind up in the Upper Peninsula, very good wind, but you don't have enough transmission. So some parts of Michigan, I know, have very good wind resources. Like everything in the wind business, it's a new industry and there's always obstacles to overcome. Transmission's always an obstacle. You know, when we borrowed our money from the bank, it was a pretty easy loan, to be honest with you. Credit has tightened up, but still, if you would put up a wind turbine, the production is, is good production. And, and if you buy the wind turbine at the right price, and we need U.S. manufactured wind turbines. I can't say that strongly enough because we need to buy a good turbine at the right price. And if you have a good wind resource, the production is just going to be there, and the bankers know that. So. You know, you don't have to buy the wind, it's out there for free, and it, that's, that's where you generate your money. So we have right now about 20,000 wind turbines producing in the United States. The U.S. Department of Energy says we need to build 300,000 wind turbines, and they're right. I believe we need to build 500,000 wind turbines. The potential is, even if we built 500,000 wind turbines, we don't be scratching the surface of the wind that's available. We have more than enough energy from wind to, to supply our needs many times over and, and it's a resource we're wasting every day that the wind blows and you don't capture with the turbine you've lost that wind that day forever it's not like a wind turbine produces as much energy as an oil well and people have to recognize this that every wind turbine is the equivalent of an oil well in energy produced but any day you're, you're not capturing the wind you've lost that energy forever we need to get these wind turbines built as soon as we can. We need U.S. manufacturing, and it, the Europeans build a very good wind turbine. But the first problem I have, you have to buy it with Euro dollars. Well, that was a dollar fifty not too long ago. Right now, it's a little less than a dollar thirty. But if you buy a turbine in Euro dollars, you're adding almost thirty percent onto the price of the turbine just in the currency exchange. It doesn't work. When, you know, you got to buy the turbine at the right price. It's like an automobile or anything else. So we need U.S. manufacturers. To build 500,000 wind turbines, and I say we've got to build these in the next 10 years, that's 50,000 turbines a year, a year. It's going to take tremendous manufacturing to do that. There's a shortage of wind turbines all over the world because people have now recognized that it's cheap energy. And then the other part is we need to build the cars that use it, the plug-in hybrid cars. Yep. So it's, it's, you know, wind turbines will solve our problem for fuel for your car, heat for your home, and, and turn your lights on, turn your computer on, everything. The energy is there, it's right here, we just need to use it. Obama's doing great things, but you got to get this through the Congress, and that hurts us. And the stimulus package, again, the, the tax credits for wind energy, if they had included ordinary income in that, ordinary people would own a wind turbine. Otherwise, now you got to go to a corporation and sell your tax credits to them. That's a disadvantage. The second thing, and it's being debated in Congress right now, and Obama's pushed it, that's the renewable energy standard. In Minnesota, our law is 25% of our 
energy by 2025 has to come from renewable, from wind. It's uh -huh. a 25 by 25 law, and that's why I got invited to come to Congress, because there are members of Congress that would like to pass the Minnesota law 25 by 25. I know they're, they're having committee hearings on it in the next couple of weeks. If Congress would pass the Minnesota law 25 by 25, that would be a tremendous shot in the arm for wind energy.